So this video was sent to me on Twitter, and it touches on a topic I haven't really covered before. I don't really want to spoil anything, so let's get started. We think SRM could buy time for other measures to be put in place. Even if it works, though, we know it won't be a magic bullet. It won't compensate for all problems, and it may have side effects. If we used geoengineering, it would need to be adjusted to balance the excess carbon in the atmosphere, and we think it would be very risky to balance a lot of carbon dioxide. Alright, so this topic is going to be on SRM, which stands for Sunlight Reflection Methods, or Solar Radiation Management. What is up ladies and gentlemen, this is James the Throw with the Impossible Channel. As you can see, they are talking about geoengineering and SRM. SRM is something a bit different. Let's just slide over here so I can explain what SRM is. Sunlight Reflection Methods. So what exactly is sunlight reflection methods? It's a vague term that represents geoengineering with the purpose of being able to reflect more sunlight back into space, thus countering the effects of global warming. Of course, these methods usually don't solve the problem of the planet heating up. Rather, it can be used to mitigate the effects of climate change. This type of procedure is sort of like genetically modified organisms. It's great, but it will require great attention to detail and a lot of testing and research in order to recognize and prevent any potential deleterious effects. For example, there could potentially be unexpected side effects such as alterations of the water cycle. There are many different types of SRMs, ranging from atmosphere manipulations, creating microscopic bubbles in the ocean, and even mirrors in space. And each of these have their own side effects that we must consider. Of course, SRMs is something that could potentially be used to mitigate the effects of global warming. My opinion? It's great. We do the proper research, we do the proper testing, and we figure out the politics behind it all, and I'm all in full support of it. As long as people don't view it as a 100% solution that can solve the problem of greenhouse gases. However, not everyone interprets it this way. They want to use this in marine clouds, right? They don't want to do this in the cities. They don't want to do this in the middle of nowhere. They want to do this in the ocean, where it's supposedly according to them, less harmful than chemtrailing, for example. Oh my god, if I hear chemtrails one more time, I'm gonna rage so hard, YouTube will demonetize my entire channel. I love you, YouTube, please don't hurt me. <clears throat> Anyway, scientists aren't thinking about performing geoengineering on marine clouds because it wouldn't be above cities or suburbs, and thus impose less harm upon people. Before I continue, I have to explain a fairly basic concept in order to properly give you the full image. Pollution in general released by, say, factories are a type of aerosol. Of course, aerosols are naturally in the sky, but due to the increased consumption of non-renewable energy, we have released more aerosol into the atmosphere in the form of pollution, which includes nitrogen oxides and hydrocarbons reacting to sunlight to create smog. These aerosols Aerosols added to the atmosphere can contribute, along with clouds, to the Earth's albedo. This causes more reflection of sunlight back into space, thus a cooling effect occurs. Since less sunlight enters the Earth, this is a cause of global dimming. So what does this have to do with what we're talking about here? Well, since the Earth's reflected properties are increased due to increased pollution, this occurs at a greater degree in cities, less in suburbs, and least over oceans. As a result, marine clouds have the least reflective capabilities compared to clouds over areas with dense populations. Targeting these clouds for brightening would logically make sense, since it's better to target clouds that have yet to have such a high albedo. Now that that's out of the way, I can't believe you're actually comparing this to contrails, or chemtrails. <sighs> what do you have to say about it? Right, because it is known that chemtrailing is basically sulfuric acid with, you know, whatnots. We don't know what they're doing, what they're adding on those chemtrails, right? Besides the sulfuric acid. So... It's crazy enough that you think that chemtrails is a real thing. It's even crazier that you could somehow name a specific compound used in these imaginary chemtrails. Sulfuric acid, huh? That's very corrosive, meaning it'll cause damage to tissues. In decent concentrations, you would be able to smell the sulfuric acid, if you're inhaling it at all. Acids have a very sour type of smell. You can sort of imagine it being similar to vinegar. I've personally had my fair share of chemical inhalations. One time, I inhaled a very concentrated sulfuric acid, and it's most definitely not fun. I've also inhaled the 20 molar base before. It literally feels like your lungs are burning and you start sweating instantly. You don't necessarily start coughing either. It just burns, not just physical pain actually, it burns in a way that is just extreme discomfort. So the moral of the story is, if you're working with acids or bases in a lab, please use a fume hood. 
Anyway, back to sulfuric acid. If high concentrations of sulfuric acid are being sprayed into the atmosphere, you'd know. You'd be able to smell that sourness when you go outside. Of course, if the concentrations are too low, you wouldn't be able to smell it at all, in which case it really wouldn't cause any major damages to your body. As for any other chemicals you think are being released into the sky, well, it'd be nice if you could tell us specifically what they are. If you don't know, then, well, your position sort of falls flat when you claim that chemtrails are present. Some scientists want to pursue research into whether marine cloud clouds could be seeded with salt water or other particles. Now, this is where I want, you know, other particles, huh? What other particles, right? Because that's going to end up raining on us either way. If this is all a conspiracy and chemtrails are indeed real, then why would the writers of this article even put in the words other particles in there? To give you hints as to what their true intentions of marine cloud brightening actually is? ridiculous. Look, salt water is by far the leading aerosol scientists are planning to use for this. It is safe, easily accessible, and easily transportable. The process goes like this. When clouds form, they can use aerosols as the nuclei to form water droplets. More aerosols means we'll have more droplets, but each are smaller in size. These smaller, but more abundant droplets have a greater reflective property compared to less abundant and bigger droplets. That's why we use salt water. The salt can act as a nuclei in order to increase albedo, which means salt is really the only substance we need. Of course, other substances can be used, such as dust, but that is a little less practical than salt water. This entire video you made freaking out about marine cloud brightening is really just a fear of salt water. This is known as marine cloud brightening. This technique aims to increase the ability of clouds to reflect solar energy away from the Earth's surface. Very well written. Reducing temperatures caused by global warming. Well, this is, again, global warming, right? We know it's kind of a hoax, and at the same time it isn't. What? Global warming is a hoax, but it also isn't? I hope you elaborate. There are people who are still trying to convince us that global warming is real and it's happening to all of other planets around us. Who the fuck claims that global warming happens to other planets around us? And there are still people trying to tell us that we are actually headed towards a, well, I would say maybe a very cold era, okay? We're talking about the next ice age. Not really. Okay, so I don't know why when you think of global warming, you think of the next ice age. I think you've watched that Hollywood film, The Day After Tomorrow, and got the idea from there. But let's talk about it a bit, since that is actually false. Here's the proposed idea of the next ice age, which I believe is the explanation the film adopted. Basically, when the temperature increases, ice caps will melt, dumping huge amounts of fresh water into the oceans. Now, there's an ocean current called the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation. It's driven by heat, but also by salinity. Water near the tropics are heated up and flows towards the northern hemisphere, where it deposits heat. Once that is done, the water cools down and, along with its salinity, sinks to the bottom of the ocean floor, since water is denser than fresh water. It can then travel through the bottom of the ocean and return to the tropics to be warmed up again. If the ice caps melt and the salinity declines, the cold water will no longer be as dense and won't sink to the bottom of the ocean. This disrupts the current and greatly reduces its activity. Less heat being deposited to the northern Atlantic hemisphere means that the entire climate there will cool down. This supposedly will cause the next ice age. Everything there is an accurate prediction on what will happen once the climate heats up enough. However, the ice age part isn't nearly true. Sure, the northern Atlantic hemisphere may see declines in temperatures from this process, but this is easily countered by any warming effects from global warming itself. In fact, temperature rises will have a much greater impact and will even delay the onset of the next ice age. It has been observed, although causation has not entirely been established, that most, if not all, ice ages begin in conjunction with a drop in greenhouse gas concentrations and ended with a period of increased greenhouse gas emission, perhaps by volcanoes. If humans continue to contribute to climate change, there likely won't be an ice age in the near future. However, that is not good news since climate change will lead to many, many other deleterious effects that will affect generations to come. Yeah, if you take a look at the charts, and I can open them just now, let's, let's Google that just now. Right, there you go. That's so easy to understand, right? So we got, we're here, folks. This is where we are. In an interglacial moment, let's just say. So the next one, you guys to look at the pattern. The next one is a drop, a huge drop. 
So let me get this straight. All the article said was the two words global warming, and you somehow link it to the ice age, and then you display us a graph of the temperature changes over the Earth's history showing that the next ice age is imminent? How exactly does that have to do with literally anything? The article is implying that we can use these SRMs to reduce the effects of recent man-made global warming, showing us a graph and then implying that the next ice age will happen because it's following natural means. What exactly is the point there? So I believe they're testing every kind of climate web, climate technologies, geoengineering, whatever you want to call it. So they're ready if they're ready for in case we go to towards an ice age. <sighs> and I just want to say something, you know, they, they're saying that the ocean, let me just find here the ocean. Sea water. Yeah, sea level, right? So Ever higher temperatures are melting the ice sheets faster than projected. That's a lie. Some people actually did their research and found out that the entire well, the continent known as Antarctica is still there, intact. Well, guess what? Antarctica is pretty big. It's gonna be a while before all of that ice melts away. But I can understand why some climate change deniers would actually say something along those lines, since there has been speculation on Antarctica actually growing in size. I think Potholder54 does a very good explanation on this, much better than I can explain it, so I'll leave a link to that part of his video down below. Well, if I remember to do that, that is. It's all a hoax. I am not sure. I don't have any evidence on that. But if it's happening, it's because of global warming that, again, is caused by industries and pollution, which is something that was told a long time ago that would heat up the planet. So it's all on us. It's not an Antarctica, right? I can't. I can't continue this. It's just a little hard to keep up with your point. Which side exactly are you on? And since when did we ever blame Antarctica on climate change? What in the world? But anyway, I'm done for now. It seems that he can't really make a coherent point, and he seems to mix up the essential details of this topic. He does have a lot of video left, so I might consider making a part 2 or something. But then again, there's a lot to talk about on this channel. Is it worth it? Hmm. No.